Nothing. Ah, Buongiorno. Buongiorno. Va bene, ok. Buongiorno Doris. Buongiorno. Va bene, allora io partirei coi video perché alla fine hm, siamo in tema vacanziero per cui cominciamo con le vacanze. Se tu Evelina sei pronta? Questi video sono Credo tutti video rigorosamente in inglese. Nuovo Nova Night Triplazione. Tutto il materiale che abbiamo fatto. Australia, San Francisco, New York, eccetera, eccetera. Meetings, you have to try Chris. With the magic of a click. When I first came to Australia, like the majority of tourists, I landed in Sydney and then Melbourne. There, I met hundreds and hundreds of Australians. And out of everybody that I met, Top of the morning, money we get it. zero of them were Aboriginals. That's why I flew all the way to the northwestern tip of Australia in Broome and drove through the middle of nowhere to meet a small community in the outback where these guys live. The Aboriginals. They are the first people to step foot in Australia thousands of years ago. They have their own languages, Guya, Iria, arts, swag, music, and pride. Now, these guys are only 3% of Australia, but their influence here goes back thousands and thousands of years. The next time you think of Australia, think of Aboriginals, because they deserve recognition and certainly deserve a visit. That's one minute. See you tomorrow. Meet Ryan. Hi, I'm Ryan, and I make vodka from sheep. This is the only guy in the world that can make vodka from a sheep. Here is how. First off, I juice the sheep. Then, I take the milk. Then, separate the sugar. Then, I make the vodka. <laughs> Vodka is so good, it's got the best vodka award in the world. And every bottle is handwritten. Ryan lives in the beautiful island of Tasmania in Australia with his beautiful family. After 10 years of making cheese from sheep, he got bored and after tons of research, he created the world's first sheep vodka. With a bit of determination, this small family on a small farm on a small island was able to turn milk into vodka. <laughs> That's one minute, see you tomorrow. Meet Campbell. Hi, I'm Campbell and I make a teddy bear every day. Campbell is a 14-year-old kid living in Tasmania, Australia. He wanted to help people, but he has no money or job. I'm only 14. But what his mom did have was... A sewing machine. So he taught himself how to make teddy bears from scratch. To send them to people around the world who could use a bit of support anywhere in the world. I've made over 1,400 teddy bears so far. And that act of kindness went viral. People from around the world joined his cause and donated money to raise over $150,000 and help a ton more people. Just hold on and think about this for a second. A 14-year-old boy with no money or resources found a way to change his world and the world of many others simply because he wanted to be kind. Because according to him, Kindness matters. That's one minute. See you tomorrow. Maura, scusami, ma si vede lo schermo? Sì. Sì, ah, sì. Okay, no, perché mi sono connessa dal telefono per controllare e io non vedevo. Va bene, procedo. Ah, sì, sì. Io sì, ho visto tutto finora. Okay. Anzi, sta andando anche avanti senza la musica, ma le parole si vedono chiare dei testi. Sì, sì. Non si sente mm -hmm. quindi? No, no, si sente. Si adesso sente. non si sente, almeno io non adesso non adesso sento. No, so Walter, tu senti? In questo momento no. Ah, ok, momento vedo, vedo te, vedo me e non sento niente. Ecco, se allora... Lo... Sì, perfetto. Ora dovrei vedere... Sì. 
This food product is sold okay. 22 million times every year in Australia. But if you're outside of Australia, I'm going to taste it for you to spare you the pain. Because this food is disgusting. I almost threw up. This is Vegemite, a popular food in Australia made of yeast that I and million others think this is inedible. <laughs> While Australians, young and old, love it. They put it on toast like it's Nutella. They put it in boiling water like it's hot chocolate and they eat it without anything either. Mmm, -mm, yum. Even Australian dogs like it. This Vegemite is supposed to be healthy and come with a lot of vitamins, but once you smell it and taste it, you'll never want a vitamin inside your body ever again. This Stop. is the best example of how one man's pain is another man's pleasure. That's one minute. See you tomorrow. Meet Greg. Hi, I'm Greg, and I love making things simple for you. In today's world, many people are scared that science is too hard or too boring. Greg used to be a university science student himself until... I quit my degree to go live in the wild. And after a hundred days in the wild, sleeping underneath the stars, one, he started to look like Gandalf, and two, he noticed the stars shifted during his sleep. And that's when he knew there is something magical about the universe. He bought a couple of astronomy books and a binocular and taught himself. Whatever he learned, he taught others, but this time... Only using language that everybody understands. He was so easy to understand that in 23 years, he taught 100,000 people about the universe and inspired many to become scientists themselves. Greg is an example that science does not have to be hard or boring. It just has to be taught well. That's one minute. See you tomorrow. YouTube, if you like this video, then I think you're gonna love NAS Academy. It's a new online school we just started to give you a voice. Yes, making videos has given me a voice. And with this voice, you can reach millions of people on the internet. Tell them stories that you care about and actually change their opinion. This skill of making videos changed my life and I think it can change yours. NAS Academy has a lot of courses that are live. They're not pre-recorded. So there is real people from the NAS daily team that teach you how to make videos like we do. Give you your voice that you so desperately need in today's world. If you're a business, if you're an entrepreneur, if you're a family person, you need a voice on the internet. And NAS Academy helps you get that voice. Click on the link below if you want to see the courses that we offer. We have very limited spots. So grab yours today. Thank you so much, and I'll see you tomorrow for another video. Devo procedere con gli altri, Maura? Sì, adesso verranno gli altri che sono su San Francisco, su New York, forse c'è ancora un pezzettino sull'Australia. Hi, welcome to Australia, where everything is upside, upside down. down. See, at any university, if you get a D on your exam, you have failed. But in Australia, D is great. It means distinction. There is no A. Tipping in Australia is not required. What you see here is what you pay. Unlike in the US, where you gotta pay tax and tip on top. In Australia, the water flushes the opposite way. People drive on the opposite side, and weather is the complete opposite. December is hot and July is cold. That's why Santa is naked. And most surprisingly, the word is used a lot. Hey, how are you? I'm good. Yourself? Good. I'm serious. Water, weather, language, grades, tips, and distance are all done the opposite way. Maybe that's why they call Australia the country down under. under. See you tomorrow. That's one minute. 
I found a woman who will beat you up if you abuse other women. She is 63 years In this video, we show you 10 best things to do in New York City. The suggestions are based on our exciting trip to the city that never sleeps. And don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel and enable notifications and share your own New York experience in the comments below. We also created a mobile friendly PDF document covering all places in this video, including maps, links, opening hours and other information plus 10 additional attractions so that you can avoid the hustle and stress when you're in New York and help support this channel. And stick around until the end of this video because we have an extra recommendation for you. Here are our top 10 picks. Number 10, Times Square. Times Square is one of the busiest pedestrian areas in the world, located in the heart of Manhattan. It is famous for its enormous electrified ads creating a surreal neon atmosphere, as well as famous theaters, shopping and dining. It attracts over 50 million visitors every year. Times Square got its name from the New York Times Tower, headquarters of the New York Times newspaper built in 1904, when the area became the epicenter of New York's social elite. 1904 was also the year when first electrified ads appeared in the square. Times Square is also the center of New York's entertainment industry with its Broadway theater district and the venue of New Year's Eve Ball Drop, which is probably one of the most famous New Year's Eve celebrations in the world. Did you know that every night at exactly 11.57 pm, the screens on Times Square transform into a three-minute art show? Number 9. One World Observatory and 9-11 Memorial one World Observatory is an observation deck situated on the top floors of One World Trade Center, also called the Freedom Tower, the tallest building in North America and the tallest building on the Western Hemisphere. One World Observatory provides amazing panoramic views of New York City from above 1,250 feet. You will enter the observatory through an impressive elevator ride featuring a virtual time lapse recreating the development of New York City's skyline from 1500s to present day. And the descent back to the ground level feels like a virtual helicopter ride around the building. When you enter the observatory, there is a short video presentation about New York and eventually the screen rises and reveals the impressive New York skyline below. What an amazing experience! Check out our PDF guide for a full list of best views of the city. One World Trade Center is the main building of the area known as World Trade Center Complex, rebuilt after the 9-11 terrorist attacks. Just outside the Freedom Tower, there is the 9-11 Memorial, located exactly where the World Trade Center Twin Towers once stood, represented by two square reflecting pools. You can visit the Survivor Tree, a tree that survived the 9-11 attacks. The 9-11 Museum is also part of the memorial. Don't miss the Oculus, an impressive terminal station on the PAT system, part of the World Trade Center complex, which peacefully blends with the surrounding architecture. Number 8. Parks New York City is home to hundreds of parks and recreation areas, offering a great escape from the busy city streets. Here are some of the best parks in New York City. The High Line, a nearly 1.5 mile long elevated park built on a former railroad spur, redesigned as a living system full of amazing green areas above New York. You can enter the High Line Park through one of the 11 entrances and stroll, read a book or simply soak in the atmosphere. Here you'll also find food, public art and entertainment areas. Central Park, the most visited urban park in the United States and probably one of the most famous parks in the world. It spreads across 843 acres and features lakes, meadows, impressive buildings and much more. First areas in Central Park opened to public in 1858. Already in 1890s, Central Park was a famous spot for ice skating. While the park is located in Manhattan and surrounded by tall buildings and city life, it is hard to believe that you are actually in a big city. Some of the more impressive sites include 
Sheep Meadow, a great place for a picnic, Bethesda Terrace and Fountain overlooking the lake, the famous Bow Bridge featured in many movies, a forest featuring beautiful pathways, the impressive Belvedere Castle, Kalia Petra's Needle and other attractions. Central Park is also a very popular recreation spot. Don't miss the Upper Fifth Avenue that runs along Central Park, nicknamed the Millionaire's Row, home of some of the wealthiest people on Earth. New York is also full of smaller but equally impressive parks, such as Bryant Park in Midtown Manhattan, located between 5th and 6th Avenue. Check out our PDF guide for more park suggestions. Number 7. Iconic Buildings New York would not be New York without its unique skyline stretching across the Manhattan Island. The Big Apple is home to numerous unique and world-famous buildings. The Vessel is one of the newest architectural marvels in New York City. This extraordinary 16 stories high structure opened in 2019 as part of the Hudson Yard redevelopment project, located close to Highline Park. You can climb this interactive artwork on its spiral staircase and experience New York from a new angle. Flat Iron Building, completed in 1902, is also referred to as one of the world's most iconic skyscrapers. Initially called the Fuller Building, because of its unusual triangular shape and resemblance to Claude's Iron, the building's name eventually changed to Flat Iron. Completed in 1930, the Chrysler Building was the tallest building in the world at the time of its completion. The building served as the corporate headquarters for the Chrysler Corporation until the mid-50s and is considered one of the most influential buildings of the Art Deco architectural style. However, Chrysler Building was the tallest building only for 11 months when it was surpassed by another Art Deco landmark skyscraper, the Empire State Building, completed in 1931. The building got its name from a nickname for New York, the Empire State. The Empire State Building is still the fifth tallest skyscraper in the United States and also features an observation deck. 30 Rockefeller Plaza was built in 1933 and is probably best known for its NBC headquarters. It is part of Rockefeller Center, a 19-building center and plaza built by the Rockefeller family, especially popular during the Christmas season because of its abundantly decorated Christmas tree. 30 Rockefeller Plaza is home to another observation deck with amazing views of Central Park and Manhattan, nicknamed Top of the Rock. Number 6. Little Italy and Chinatown Two neighborhoods which played a crucial role in the cultural history of New York are Little Italy and Chinatown, located in Lower Manhattan. Little Italy or Piccola Italia was once a large settlement of Italian immigrants. It was a known mobster meeting place. In fact, you can even take a mafia walking tour. The movie Godfather also takes place in Little Italy. Today, Little Italy is still home to several Italian restaurants and cafes, but the majority of the original Italian population is relocated and Little Italy is shrinking with Chinatown on one side and upscale Soho on the other side. However, Little Italy is now a popular tourist attraction. Chinatown is home to the largest ethnic Chinese population in the Western Hemisphere, estimated between 90,000 and 100,000. The neighborhood is full of Chinese restaurants, shops, as well as other cultural organizations. Number 5. Museums New York City is one of the world's main centers for culture and art and home to numerous museums. So much so that a section of Manhattan's Fifth Avenue, where many of the famous museums are located, is nicknamed the Museum Mile. Let's name just a few of the most famous museums in New York. Guggenheim Museum is the permanent home to Impressionist, Post-Impressionist, Early Modern and Contemporary Art, as well as several temporary exhibitions. The museum is also known because of its incredible architecture, with a central rotunda where the art is displayed. So even if Impressionism is not your thing, the building itself, designed by Frank Lloyd Wright, is a work of art. MoMA, or Museum of Modern Art, offers a collection of modern and contemporary art and is also home to film and design displays and performances. New York Transit Museum in Brooklyn offers a glimpse of amazing history of New York's complex transit system. 
The museum is located in a former subway station and displays a collection of subway trains from the beginning until now. There are many other impressive museums in New York. Check out our PDF guide for the list and a special map of the must-see museums in New York City. Number 4. Grand Central Terminal Grand Central Terminal is a world-famous commuter train terminal in Midtown Manhattan. The building also features shops and restaurants spread out through several different levels. You will probably recognize the main concourse with its iconic clock in the middle from the movies, as it is a popular meeting place. Because of its impressive Beaux-Arts architecture and its central location, Grand Central Terminal, which was completed in 1913, is one of the 10 most visited tourist attractions in the world. Don't miss the Whispering Gallery located below the main concourse. A person standing in one corner can clearly hear the person from the opposite side. Number 3. Brooklyn Bridge Brooklyn Bridge connects Brooklyn and Manhattan, two of New York's five boroughs, crossing the East River. When opened in 1883, it was the largest suspension bridge in the world. Brooklyn Bridge is 1,596 feet long and 277 feet tall and is one of the main tourist attractions in New York City. While there was once even a railway line on the bridge, the bridge is now open only to cars, pedestrians and cyclists, and commercial vehicles are banned from using the bridge. Join over 10,000 people who cross the bridge every day on a large pedestrian and bicycle lane and enjoy amazing views of Lower Manhattan skyscrapers on one side and historic Brooklyn on the other side. The walk in one direction takes at least 20 minutes. Number 2. Wall Street New York City would probably not be one of the world's main financial centers without Wall Street. Wall Street is an actual street located in Manhattan's financial district. But over the years, the word Wall Street became a synonym for the American financial markets, as two of the largest stock exchanges in the world, New York Stock Exchange and NASDAQ, are both located on Wall Street. The most recognizable building on Wall Street is the New York Stock Exchange building, although there are many other impressive buildings in the area, for example, the Federal Hall or Trinity Church. Don't miss two impressive statues. Fearless Girl in front of Stock Exchange and Charging Bull located in Bowling Green Park nearby. You can read more about the meaning of both statues in our travel guide. Number 1. Statue of Liberty and Ellis Island Liberty enlightening the world, or what we know today simply as the Statue of Liberty, is a 151 feet tall statue located on the Liberty Island in the New York Harbor. The statue was a gift of friendship from the people of France to the United States in 1886 and represents figure of Libertas, a Roman liberty goddess holding a torch in her right hand and a tablet with the date of US Declaration of Independence, the 4th of July 1776, in her left hand. The statue is recognized as a universal symbol of freedom and democracy. The Liberty Island now also houses a new Statue of Liberty Museum where the original torch is displayed. On the adjacent Ellis Island, you will find another museum dedicated to the former immigration inspection station, which operated on the island from 1892 to 1954. Over 12 million immigrants arrived in the United States through Ellis Island. The American Museum of Immigration offers a glimpse of what it was like for people arriving in America for the first time trying to find a better life. Don't miss Ellis Island Immigrant Hospital Complex on the south side of the island, which you can only visit with a guided tour. If you want to visit either the Statue of Liberty or Ellis Island, you will have to buy one ticket for boat destinations as part of the Statue of Liberty National Monument, which includes a boat cruise with statue cruises, the only authorized official provider of tickets and tours to both islands. And here is the bonus tip we promised. Located right under the Highline Park in Manhattan's Chelsea neighborhood, Chelsea Market is a paradise for foodies, offering an array of restaurants from all over the world. A more proper way to describe Chelsea Market would be a food mall, because of its design when you can simply walk from one restaurant to the next. Chelsea Market was transformed into its current form in 1997 from what was originally a factory complex of the National Biscuit Company. In fact, Oreo Cookie was invented in this very building in 1912. 
we created a mobile-friendly PDF document that you can store offline on your phone covering all places in this video, including maps, links, opening hours and other information, plus 10 additional attractions so that you can avoid the hustle and stress when you're in New York. Get yours now and help us sustain our channel. Do you have a favorite place in New York City or have you been to one of the places we presented in this video? Share it in the comments below. And don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel and enable notifications so that we can keep bringing you more awesome content. Ma è vero che può perdersi nel corpo? Ecco, adesso dovrebbe esserci San Francisco. In this video, I'll show you 10 best things to do in San Francisco. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel and share your own San Francisco experience in the comments below. The suggestions are based on our exciting trip to San Francisco. Here are our top 10 picks. Number 1. Fisherman's Wharf Fisherman's Wharf is a popular historic neighborhood in San Francisco. It got its name in the 1800s when fishermen provided food for hordes of gold rushers and the wharf became a home base for their fishing fleet. In the 1970s it became a world famous tourist attraction. Fisherman's Wharf includes several interesting locations, such as Pier 39 where you'll find restaurants, shops and other attractions, for example Sea Lions, Bay Cruises, Curcell, Infinite Mirror Maze, Aquarium and many more. Visit the cable car turnaround or take a ride on one of the famous San Francisco cable cars, the last working cable car system of its kind in the world. Or visit the historic Pier 45 and Ghirardelli Square which was initially a chocolate factory. Number 2. Palace of the Fine Arts Theatre The Palace of the Fine Arts is a monumental structure built for the 1915 Panama Pacific International Exposition to show the world that San Francisco could be an international city following a devastating earthquake and fire of 1906. In addition to the colossal Roman ruins inspired architecture, it features a lagoon and walkways, making it a popular location for art exhibitions and a favorite spot for weddings. Take a short walk through this amazing architectural masterpiece. You can also visit the Wave Organ, a wave-activated acoustic sculpture located nearby. The effects and intensity vary depending on the level of the tide. Sit back and enjoy the sound of the ocean. Number 3. Golden Gate Bridge Golden Gate Bridge is one of the most recognized American symbols and has been declared one of the wonders of the modern world. It was built in 1937 and was the tallest and longest suspension bridge at the time of its construction. The bridge connects the strait between San Francisco Bay and the Pacific Ocean. With its international orange paint and its picturesque surroundings, it is said to be the most photographed bridge in the world. You can walk across the bridge and decide which side hides the best spot for a selfie with this iconic piece of history. Number 4. Sutra Baths The Sutra Baths is an open area on the ruins of what was once the largest indoor swimming pool in the world. Built at the end of the 19th century, it featured six saltwater and one freshwater pool. The baths struggled for many years due to high maintenance costs and in the 1960s transformed into a nice skating rink. However, the facility burned to the ground short after. Nearby, you'll find Camera Obscura, a rare device based on a 15th century design by Leonardo da Vinci. It produces 360 degrees of live images of the Seal Rock area. Number 5. Golden Gate Park Golden Gate Park is a large urban park consisting of over 1,000 acres featuring hills, lakes, meadows, gardens, playgrounds and buildings. The park offers a great escape from the city life and is an ideal place to take a walk, read a book or have a picnic. The park is full of interesting locations such as Conservatory of Flowers, Japanese Tea Garden, beautiful Stow Lake with the Golden Gate Pavilion and Strawberry Hill, Alvord Lake Bridge, which is believed to be the first reinforced concrete bridge in America, Dutch Windmill, one of the two windmills built to irrigate the park, 
and many other sights. Number 6. Beautiful streets. San Francisco is known for its rolling hills and beautiful streets with cute and colorful houses and amazing ocean views. Don't miss the following locations. Painted ladies near Alamo Square, a row of Victorian homes with Edwardian elements painted in different colors to enhance their architectural detail with a beautiful view of downtown from the Alamo Square Park above. 16th Avenue Tile Steps, a neighborhood project where the community got together and raised funds to transform 163 steps into a work of art. Lombard Street, with its steep one-block section with eight sharp turns, claimed to be the crookedest street in the world. There are plenty more streets to discover. See the full list in the description. Number 7. Alcatraz. Alcatraz Island got its name from the Spanish word usually defined as meaning pelican or a strange bird. The island is famous for its abandoned prison, Alcatraz Federal Penitentiary. The first prison was constructed in the 19th century and rebuilt in 1911. It later became famous as The Rock and was believed to be escape-proof due to the cold waters and strong bay currents. It housed over 1500 of America's most ruthless criminals such as Al Capone. The prison was forced to shut down in 1963 due to high maintenance costs and bad reputation. The island is now open for public. We recommend reserving your ticket to visit the island in advance as they are often sold out. See the description for information on how to visit Alcatraz. Number 8. Ferry Building The San Francisco Ferry Building is a terminal for ferries traveling across the San Francisco Bay. The building is located on Embarcadero, the street where San Francisco's piers start, beginning with Pier 1, located right next to the ferry building. The construction of the building was completed in 1898 as the largest city project at that time. The building features a food, retail and restaurant hall, focusing on local and sustainable products and offers an amazing view towards the Oakland Bay Bridge. Number 9. Financial District Financial District is the Manhattan-like district, a concentration of tall buildings and corporate headquarters of numerous world-famous companies, such as Wells Fargo, PG&E and Gap. The district underwent a construction boom in the second half of the 20th century, when the building height restrictions were lifted due to better earthquake-proof building techniques. You can't miss the Transamerica Pyramid, which was the tallest building in San Francisco until recent construction of Salesforce Tower. Number 10. Chinatown While San Francisco has not one but four Chinatowns, the one located on Grant Avenue is the biggest Chinatown outside Asia and the oldest one in North America. It was established in the mid-19th century and has played a major role amongst the Chinese immigrants in North America. It still retains its own customs, languages and identity and offers a number of traditional Chinese shops, restaurants and attractions, such as the Dragon Gate, Sing Chong Building, Tin Hao Temple, the Chinese Consolidated Benevolent Association and many more. We created a Google map with all the suggestions. The link is in the description. Do you have a favorite place in San Francisco? Share it in the comments below and don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Oh la la. It's... Ok. Bene. So, did you like it? Them? Do you like did you like them? I liked. Yes. I like. Um, I want to go in America. <laughs> to America? Mm -hmm. To America. When and where? Which part of America? Um oh, uh, New York, mm -hmm. uh, Philadelphia, mm -hmm. uh, Boston, Boston and San, San Francisco. And San Francisco. And, and after, and have a, and have a, um, once, once again, oppure ah. un'altra volta, another time. Another time, in uh, uh, the park of uh, America. The parts America. of America. America. Yosemite. So I like those it, in uh, California uh, and Utah. Very, very excellent. Uh, I, okay. uh, did, uh, you know Didier Valley? 
the death valley yes death of valley. course it is in the tour it is included yes mm -hmm. uh, uh, how many times uh, to visit uh, the park well when i was there it was more or less 30 years ago <laughs> uh, and um, i visited california utah nevada and something else but it took me three weeks ah, in a motorhome, in a van, you know, uh -huh. in a motorhome, in, in a camper. camper. In a camper, ah. mm -hmm. And in... Uh, we, we drove alone, abbiamo guidato da soli e ci siamo fatti il nostro tour da soli. And we made our own tour um, in America. But listen, I didn't go to New York. Ah, I have been. I have been. I have been to New York when we were there five years ago. Four or five Los years Angeles ago. and San Francisco. So I suppose you might. Huh? Yes, mm -hmm. I saw also. I went mm -hmm. coast to coast by bus. Coast to coast, okay. 22 so, days. and what do you think, uh, Grazianella? Responding yes. to, to the question of uh, Pinuccia, I suppose at least one month if you want to see yes. even uh, New York as well. Mm? Yes. But, uh, well. I stay only one week, in effect, uh, with the tour organized. But not enough, mm -hmm. in fact, because we did not see the museums and uh, other things. Yeah. Uh, that, you know, That's why. The, the, bull, the bull that is in uh, Wall Street is made from the artist from Modica, Siracusa. Ah. Eh, Siracusa, Ragusa. Mm -hmm. It's Italian Ragusa. work. Yes, uh, he, he, he posed this uh, mm -hmm. joke, okay, good. Mm -hmm. and after it was the, the began the, the symbol of Wall Street. Now there is mm -hmm. the small uh, statue of a woman, of a dancer, and uh, he, the author of the bull is not uh, happy about it. <laughs> Because ah, they yes, of are course. attracted by this statue. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what about Australia? Anyone uh, went to Australia? No. no. Qualcuno? Mm -hmm. Okay. No. Good. Se volete scrivere quello che più vi ha colpito per lunedì, così poi magari ne parliamo, vediamo un po' bene. E, um, no. Scusa, ma mm. tu cortesemente ci dai i titoli del... Al, cioè, non ti dico mand, mandaci il... ma dacci i titoli de, di quello che ci hai fatto vedere, perché io sono andato nel contempo a guardare qualcosa con l'altro computer... Mm. Io ho visto che ci sono tante mm. cose, però almeno se mi dai i titoli del... del Io ve li ho mandati test... tutti sul, sul WhatsApp questi video. Ve ah, li ho sì? mandati tutti sul... Ne, ne sì, ho visto, ne ho sono visto gli uno. stessi che... Sì, sì, che vi ha mostrato Evelina, sono gli ah, stessi, okay, ce okay. li avete tutti lì. Ah, bene, Poi bene, bene. ve ne avevo mandato anche altri fosse... prima. Eh, scusami Maura, siccome forse... Noi non siamo nel gruppo di WhatsApp, però vabbè il nostro numero ce l'hai, sì. eventualmente se puoi mandarli ah, anche a te. Anch'io non ce l'ho. Sì, eh. posso, sì, sì, sì ve li posso mandare, mandare certo. Eh. Se vi interessano, Evelina, sì, grazie. Sì, 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 sì interessano non sì, anche perché niente riguardo a questo. Ce li vediamo bene perché così capiamo un po' di sì, più. Perché, sì, insomma. è vero, è necessario <ride> risentirli un po' di rivederli un po' di volte. Sono un, un, sì. un sunto molto stretto, eh, corre molto, quindi eh, eh. la difficoltà è quella di mm. star dietro a quello che dice eh. Eh, <coughs> e a quello che fa vedere. Sì. Però okay. c'è il vantaggio che avete gli iscritti sotto, eh, sottotitolato in inglese, questo è molto sì. importante. Sì, per noi Quindi no. quando lo rivedete, 
Eh? Per New York non c'è la sotto, il sottotitolo. Io l'ho seguito bene perché lo conosco e lo, ho capito di che parlava. Però non no, c'era. Ma il no, no, c'erano, c'erano. Eh. C'erano, eh, bisogna sì, solo sì, attivarli. Sì, sì. Bisogna diciamo che adesso la difficoltà sì. era di guardare, sentire eh, e vedere esatto, i sottotitoli. Per eh, cui era eh, poi... mm. eh, Però insomma... Certo. Mm. Allora ah, facciamo che... Ehm, perché... Vi avevo mandato anche gli altri, quelli precedenti, sulla Giamaica, eh, sulle stranezze delle persone che frequentano i bar sia in America che in Gran Bretagna e quelli sono molto Laura, istruttivi, scusami, anche loro avevano i sottotitoli. Quanti ne abbiamo in Italia? A me non strani. è mai arrivato niente, mi è arrivato il lavoro di Walter che è stato bravissimo, che ha mandato tutto in email, ma da parte tua sì. non ho ricevuto niente. Grazie niente. Walter. Sì, ah, prego, è stato veramente pure. bravo. Grazie. Eh, no. Ehm, no, Questi io... video, se volete, magari Evelina ve li può mandare, sì, non lo so, grazie. questi video, sì, sì, anche i precedenti. Mm. Anche perché e se poi... sono su YouTube li possiamo andare a eh. riprendere in, unitamente. Qualcuno magari Qualcuno è su cosidati. YouTube, qualcuno è su TikTok, perché ah, anche TikTok è diventato un fenomeno dilagante, quindi... Quelli eh, più divertenti su come la gente prende in giro i baristi, eccetera, erano su TikTok. Comunque, se volete, magari, non so, Evelina, tu potresti rimandarglieli eventualmente, quelli i precedenti che avevamo visto, che erano la, già due sulla Giamaica e poi c'erano c'era la ragazza, quella che... Uh, è tutta altezzosa va nel bar e sì. anche quello è sottotitolato molto interessante Vole, per il caffè con latte. E, poi, eh, e poi ce ne sono tipo un altro di tre o quattro dove si parla assolutamente di 3000 specie di caffè diverse che fanno impazzire i baristi e di tutti i comportamenti quantomeno strani eh che tutti adottano quando entrano in un bar, da quello che vuole filarsi la barista, vuole darle l'appuntamento, quello che vuole pagare con 500 monetine, eccetera, eccetera. E lì anche si impara tantissimo, oltre che della cultura, sia americana che inglese, ma anche delle parole nuove e dei vari tipi come l'approccio per esempio alla colazione nei vari paesi e l'utilizzo del caffè e io li ho trovati molto divertenti poi vabbè dei gusti bus, ognuno non ho avuto neanche troppissimo tempo per fare delle ricerche adeguate ma se vi interessano possiamo continuare nel senso si può anche fare una, un invio così Ogni tanto magari vi mando qualche, qualche video, vediamo un po' durante l'estate. Ma scusa, tu ce l'hai Questo... i nostri numeri? Io non ce l'ho il tuo numero di telefono. Io ce l'hai mai. Ma no, tua. questi... Allora, eh, purtroppo <ride> tu grazie Anella non sei in nessun Whatsapp, perché questi eh. sono tutti... Di, eh, whatsapp che io ho di tutti i miei alunni che ho avuto in presenza sia in legioni mm. romane che in san paolino che in virudini che in gabelle diciamo in, tu in tutti ma io sono praticamente attiva dal 1991 <ride> nei comuni nei, nei municipi eccetera eccetera quindi questo è tutto un bagaglio che io ho accumulato e però vabbè se volete possiamo anche um, continuare questo invio con questi video senz'altro quelli che ho mandato finora a Evelina non so eh, magari lei ve li ha anche mandati per oppure non erano no, proprio no 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 non, no, no. No, non solo, sono arrivati i video sì, io non so se si possano mandare per mail questi video non lo so io non no. sono una grande tecnologa no, perché... e tuttora non cioè, ma ora scusa siccome per... il nostro numero ce l'hai magari se ci inserisci nel cam di legioni romane noi eravamo in presenza però magari non è mai capitata l'occasione eh, ma io 
non so farle quelle cose lì ah, veramente okay. piuttosto allora... ve lo mando ve lo mando ve lo mando per uh, sul tuo whatsapp mi hai mandato un tuo sì, whatsapp sì. personale sì. Sì, sì, okay. perfetto. Quelli fai... di cui ho i numeri, volentieri. No. Certo. Va no, bene. Allora io poi te lo okay. scrivo. Con tranquillità, eh, non è che... Sì, no, va bene, tu bene. scrivimelo, Grazianella, io te lo mando nel sì. tuo WhatsApp, va bene. Ma, Ma okay. anche tu, mi dicevi? Eh, scusami, il... allora, senza diventare matti, eh, siccome per la maggior parte sono firmati che sono su YouTube, e eh, YouTube può, posso, può accedere chiunque, è sufficiente che tu indichi proprio scrivendolo sul, su whatsapp i titoli del, de, di questi filmati e poi ognuno se li va a cercare anche perché unitamente a questi io quando sono entrato in Australia eh, ce n'è una, una montagna eh, quindi ci sono quelli e altri che ah, possiamo sì, vedere beh, certo. sì, certo sì, sì. anche perché vediamo se il filmato no, no. a volte se eh. sono pesante non per... Passano, io quello che vi ho mandato nel whatsapp è quello il titolo ve li ho mandati tu ce l'avete sul whatsapp di legioni romane sì. avete tutto questo elenco Ma... vario di cose no, 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 Maura no, l'hai mandato anche... sono quelli lì Maura no. l'hai mandato anche sul whatsapp di San Paolino posso mandarlo sul whatsapp di San Paolino sì certo perché certo, io certo. sono sul whatsapp sì, sì. di San Paolino e non su quello di Legione Romana prima. e quindi se mi mandi, me okay. lo mandi su Whatsapp di San Paolino i titoli e io poi dopo riesco a recuperarli sì. su Youtube va bene, si può senz'altro fare diciamo Scusa, che Maura, questo qui è stato mh, una... ma avete bisogno sì. di questi link? Mm -hmm. sì, sì, anche sì, sì, sì. Sì. allora quelli, che, quelli sì. che sono stati inviati ce li ho qua e va bene, ok che la no, io per ora non ho niente per... se mm. sono stati mandati in precedenza e che io non ho mai visto cioè l'invio di, di cosa serve di questi link che abbiamo visto adesso o ci sono no, altre cose no, questo... o quelle che avete sì, visto anche nei questo... giorni precedenti le lezioni precedenti sono quelle sul caffè sì. Sì. non lo so okay. mi, Laura, sì. mi dai un segno sì. di vita tu? grazie io ci sono ci sono Ok, qui, cosa dimmi, devo vedo. inviare? Il link di questa mattina e dell'altra allora, volta, giusto? Sì, dai, sì, quelli di questa sì, mattina sì, sì se dobbiamo rifletterci se sopra. Questi. Se ci mandi i link sì, su... Sì, quelli dell'altra no, volta. Mail, via mail, via mail. Perché via mail. Qualcuno sì, di sì. noi la, la, ha solo ah, mail. Okay. Sì, corretto. Claro, sì, okay. sì, 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 sì. Ottimo. Mm -hmm. Con il link così non riempiamo il WhatsApp Contenti e di sopra. Ok, allora, vediamo. ho preso i vostri singoli WhatsApp eh, della, mh, dunque, un brano che parlava del barbecue, ce l'avete? Altrimenti posso mandarlo anche a Evelina, questo senz'altro, del barbecue. E... Possiamo continuare con questa conversazione. Poi lunedì rivediamo tutto, tutto, tutto e cantiamo anche. Ci sono anche alla fine dei, dei vostri speak up dei cantautori con delle canzoni e con il testo delle canzoni. Va anche bene? Quindi lunedì che sarà... <ride> Mm -hmm. ma no tanto sta già piovendo la... magari volge al bello a Walter <ride> sta già piovendo non ti preoccupare <ride> va no, bene allora dire, io direi Laura, scusami che sono stata in biblioteca sì? e da, da poco hanno ripreso sì? eh, e ci hanno anche lo speak up quindi in ogni caso eh, che hanno preso e io che ti dicevo No, perché prima non l'avevano, mi hanno detto che hanno preso questi accordi e quindi ce l'hanno, però non puoi tenerli più di dieci giorni. Sì, l'aveva detto eh, l'altra volta la Maura. Eh. Eh, perché io prima mi avevano detto di no, avevo chiamato anche a Bologna. Sì, io vi avevo detto, detto no, di provare non perché no, conoscendo tutti mm -hmm. i vostri indirizzi non potevo sapere dove indirizzarvi in quale biblioteca. Sì. 
però era chiaro che ovviamente essendo diventati zona bianca adesso sono riprese tutte le pubblicazioni, tutti i vari speak up eccetera eccetera, quindi quelli vecchi li potete prendere e tenere per fare quel famoso lavoro che dicevamo, no? questo del work it out, partendo da novembre, dal mese di novembre potete fare tutti gli esercizi che vi avevo detto. Ok, comunque magari lunedì proviamo a farne anche qualcuno così per, per avviare poi, eh, come dire, l'esercizio in toto. Va bene, allora io adesso esempio. ascolterei. Certo, esatto, quello. Sì, sì. Allora io ascolterei questa conversazione che viene fatta eh, sul barbecue cosa avviene durante un barbecue e tutta la nuova terminologia allora ascoltiamo Ma è su questa qualche... breve conversazione è su qualche speak up Come? è su qualche speak sì, up questa video. conversazione è eh, praticamente quella di giugno come? a ah, quella di giugno sì ok sì, lo speak up di giugno sì sì allora vediamo tra l'altro se è incisa però perché non so bene allora pagina vediamo 42. un po' pagina 42 sì non so però se è fatta su ah, okay. Su CD o su MP3, ecco per esempio nello speak up di luglio c'è la canzone dei Beatles, eh, Here Comes the Sun, e questa è abbastanza orecchiabile con tutto il testo, questa la potremmo anche cantare, è un inno del sole, quindi al sole per l'estate. Luglio? Ecco, ok. No, di allora, giugno, ah, no, c'è, c'è, di giugno, di giugno, luglio non è ancora uscito. No. Ok, allora vediamo un po'. Questo è il 12. Sì, si può ascoltare, lo ascoltiamo subito. Meet lovers, so, everyday dialogues next. Pagina di spiegare 42. Grazie. Prego. What shall we cook? Well, we're all meat lovers, so lots of beef and pork. I'll get some beef burgers and sausages. How about lamb chops? They're great off the barbie. Oh, yes, definitely. We can do steaks as well to make it really special. Sure. What do you prefer, T-bone, sirloin, or filet? Let's do ribeye. There's nothing better than a juicy grilled ribeye steak. We could do spare ribs, too, but they're a bit messy. So what? Let's go for it. Okay, so we've got burgers, sausages, chops, steak, and ribs. Will that be enough? Better do some hot dogs. Just in case. Oh, and um, maybe a salad. Ok, bene. Next up. Questo è un po' una conversazione per gli amanti del barbecue. Va bene. Allora, vogliamo dividere le parti. Ah, um, siccome ovviamente non basterà per finirla tutta, se volete rimanere anche poi dopo tanto questa l'avrei fatta comunque anche con i signori del base quindi va bene allora chi vuole cominciare due volontari coraggio come io va bene non tutti sì. io con la barba io con la barba poi? faccio l'uomo dai tu con la barba va bene ok e Ma Rossana vuoi fare la donna? non lo so va bene Rossana no. fa la donna Ok, ok, dai, coraggio. Allora, so it. Ah, sì, esatto. Meat lovers BBQ. So it's I grid. Well, do the barbecue on Sunday. 
What shall we cook? Well, where all meat lovers? We are, we are, we are all meat. We are all meat lovers. So lots of beef and pork. I'll get some beef burgers and uh, sausages. Um, how, how about lamb chops? They are great of the Barbie. Barbie. Oh, yes, definitely. We can do sticks as well to make in really special. Sure. What do you prefer? T-bone, T-bone, uh, sirloin, 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 or, mm -hmm. or uh, fillet. Let's fillet. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's uh, do rib eye. There's uh, nothing better than juicy grilled rib uh, rib eye stick. Rib eye. Ribeye okay. stick. Um, we mm -hmm. could do uh, spare ribs too, uh, but they are a bit messy. So messy. what? Messy. messy. Ah, messy. Mm -hmm. Messy. So what? Let's go for it. Okay. So we have got uh, uh, burgers. Sausi burgers, burgers, sausages, sausages, chops, stick and ribs. Will that be enough? Better do some hot dog just in case. Oh, and maybe a salad. Bene, ok. Altri due, coraggio. Altri due scusa, volontari Maura, eh, che poi scusa, abbiamo Maura. tutto il... Filetti, sì. Filetto, come si pronuncia esattamente? Perché l'ho pronunciato male, secondo me. Quello lì viene pronunciato alla francese, filet. Ah, filet? Ah, ok. Mm -hmm. oh, filet. Sì, ok. Grazie. Ok, bene. Ci sono altri due? Volontari, coraggio. Chi non l'ha ancora fatta questa lettura? L'avete fatto tutti? La, sì, l'avevo fatta con Walter non la settimana più. scorsa. Anche sì, io l'avevo fatta con Walter settimana scorsa. Sì, infatti. Eh, non l'avevo già fatta. Se, se non c'è nessuno, se vuoi ci ripetiamo. Eh, la, ok, la bene. Allora. <ride> Ma è finita anche allora. Partendo dall'inizio. Allora, qui c'è una frase idiomatica all'inizio. So, it's agreed. Cosa vuol dire questo? Così è deciso. Mm. Concludendo, so, così è deciso. Così è deciso. Va bene. Eh. Mm -hmm. è e è il significato di what shall we cook? What shall we cook? Che cosa c'è un significato in tutto questo? Che mm? cosa dobbiamo cucinare? Un modo particolare. Eh, cosa dobbiamo cucinare? Dobbiamo cucinare. Cioè, vuol dire dovere. Perfetto. Mm -hmm. Molto bene. Tu cook un verbo regolare, cucinare. Ok. Mm -hmm. Quello che si nota principalmente in questo brano è che tutte le frasi sono contratte. Ve ne rendete conto? Avete visto? I verbi sono tutti okay. contratti. Mm -hmm. Quindi quel verbo lì, well... Where non è where, eh? perché mm. where è simple past mm. e se io dico where mi diventa noi eravamo oppure mm. noi fumo. Quello lì è la contrazione al presente del verbo essere. We yeah. are, we are, ok? We are. Perfetto. Poi abbiamo un'altra contrazione che è I'll get e questo? A cosa I si will. riferisce questa cosa? I, 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 I will. I will più infinito diventa futuro. futuro. Ok? I'll get sì, some burgers, eccetera. Va bene. Poi, anche nel terzo paragrafo, 
Dai. Cioè, il verbo essere Dai. contra. Maura, scusa, sì. Maura, sì. dobbiamo andare. Perfetto. Per allora ci trasferiamo tutti. No, eh, io sì. saluto, ci vediamo lunedì. Grazie. Sì, sì, certo, Buon fine certo. settimana.